you just bought your keyboard and you're really excited to start your first piano lesson. If you're an absolute beginner, this video will be great for you. I'm gonna explain some concepts you'll need to know in very simple terms to help you get started in this wonderful piano playing journey. We're gonna talk about fingering, note names, reading sheet music, learning some chords, and by the end of this video, you will be able to play this little song. I'm sure you're getting super excited to start. Do you see that subscribe button down there? Make sure you are subscribed to this channel to stay in touch with more of these free piano lessons and tutorials. Let's talk very quickly about fingering. So in piano playing, you'll be using all 10 fingers. Now, if you can raise your hands up like that with me, I'll get you to do a short little exercise. If you can just wiggle this thumb, this is our number ones in piano, number one. And let's wiggle our number two now. So these are the index fingers. See if you can wiggle these fingers without wiggling other fingers. I know it's a challenge, but give it a try. And let's wiggle the number three. This is our middle finger. Again, try your best to not wiggle anything else. This one is not entirely possible because it's very connected to your fourth finger. You can see I'm struggling a bit as well, but try your best. Let's go to number four now. These are your ring fingers. And finally, your pinkies at number five. Just make sure you remember these finger numbers because we'll be referring to them a lot in your piano studies. Now that we're pretty good with your finger numbers, let's jump into the keyboard. On first glance, the keyboard is a bit intimidating. It's filled with so many white notes and so many black notes. Let's look at the black keys first. There's a whole bunch of two black key groups, three black key groups, and two and three and two and three. And if you look up and down of your keyboard, you'll see that it's all in groups of two and three black keys. Once you understand the groups of two and three black keys, you'll realize that the piano is just a series of repeating notes again and again. For example, this particular group of two black key notes, if I were to play this one to the left, that is actually the same note as this one, which is the same note as this one. They're the same note, but they are just higher or lower in frequency, but it's the same C sharp note. Give it a try now. Why don't you go and find all the two black key groups and play the one to the left, like what I just did. Okay, next up we are going to look at some white keys. I want you to first find this note. This note is called the A. Now how do you find the A? You basically look at the three black key group and it's right in the middle of the second and the third one. That's called an A. If you can play that very quickly now with any finger is okay. Now, each of these notes are an alphabet letter. In music, we go from A to G. There is no H. After G, it repeats A to G again. So this is what it is. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's no H. So if you look here, we're starting on A again. If you can notice, this particular note is actually that same note that we started before. It is in the three black key group, right in the middle of the second and the third one, A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. This is a little chart I always give my students. It's a little bit of a cheat sheet. So if you want to, you can maybe take a screenshot of this to help you not only with finding particular notes on the keyboard, but I also like that this chart syncs it up to the exact position it is on the sheet music notation. Speaking of sheet music, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, reading sheet music is one of those topics that sometimes puts people off. When I was young, I detested reading sheet music. I would always just use my ears to figure things out. And as I grew older, I realized how much of a mistake that was and if I could do things again, I would really prioritize learning how to read and analyze this sheet music language. What is sheet music for? I always tell my students, once you learn how to read sheet music, you actually have learned how to read another language because sheet music does the same thing as any other language does, which is to communicate ideas. If I were to play a very simple piece of music for you, Now listen closely again, because I've got some questions for you after you hear this again.
Now let's imagine there's no such thing as sheet music notation. How would you describe this particular music excerpt? And you might say, oh, Jason, I think it seems like it's going up. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. And then it, it sort of comes down. Ba, 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 ba. And I would say to that, well done. That's a really great point. If you look at the sheet music I have on the screen now, you'll see that the music is going from a lower frequency to a higher frequency. Do, 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 do. And then it goes from that top note do, 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 back down. And if you notice something in that little song as well, not all the notes were the same length. If they were all the same length, it would have sounded like this. Now I know that sounds pretty close to the original one, but there is something that doesn't quite sound right. I'm gonna play the wrong version one more time. Have a listen to this. The correct version should have been. I hope you can notice by now that there is a note in the middle that was longer in length than the other notes. It happens also for the final notes as well. So you can probably intuitively just tell from looking at the screen now, the ones with the shaded dots are the ones that are shorter and the ones that are not shaded are longer in length notes. I use this little example to show you that sheet music helps us to communicate two very important things. Number one is the pitch of the notes. So how high or how low the frequencies of these notes are. And number two is the rhythm, which is how long or how short these notes are played for. As you play more and more music and read more and more music, you'll get exposed to different kinds of pitches and different kinds of rhythms. But basically, sheet music is for these two main things. Lots to take in, very well done so far. Let's now move on to actually playing our song for this first piano lesson. I'm gonna first teach you what a chord is. A chord is basically two or more notes that are played simultaneously at the same time. Early in the lesson, we figured out where A was. So for example, this A, if I play this A, and let's say I added another note, for example, like this, the, the fifth up, one, two, three, four, five. So five spaces from there. So A, one, two, three, four, five. And I played that one together. That will make a chord. Let's give this a try now. Using the same position, we're gonna play four chords today. Now remember, you just need to learn one position and just move around in the different areas of the keyboard. Let me show you what I mean. So this is the A chord, A minor chord. Don't worry about the minor part for now, but I just know that I'm gonna call this an A minor. Okay, let's move to the F now. Let's move to the C now. So you're moving up to the C. Very nice. And finally to the G. I'll just play that one more time for you. If you can do that, congratulations, you have just learned four chords. I'm gonna give you now three challenges to add to that. If you can now play the same thing again, but with your left hand, please play the root of the note. The root of the note basically is the letter that you see in the actual chord name. It's the most important part of that chord mix. So if we play now to F, to the C, I'll just show you that one more time. So you're playing the A and the E together in the right. In the left hand, you're just playing whatever is on that bottom of the right hand, okay? So, going to F, going to C, going to G. And just repeat that. Awesome. With that little exercise, let's now move on to the actual song for this lesson, which is All of Me by John Legend. It sounds like this. If you notice, 
Left hand's playing the same thing, but right hand has a couple of different parts. Let's look at what the right hand is doing. For the first A minor chord, you're doing the same thing, A and E. And next, you're actually keeping this A here and moving your pinky to the top, to this F. Okay. Next one, you're going to move both of these down. And last but not least, you're just going to keep that G there and move this E down to this D. Just show you that one more time. From the start, it sounds like this. Both move down. And once that's good, add the left hand in. Now this is quite a big step of what I'm asking you to do here. It's You're basically playing with two hands, coordinating different movements. You might find yourself wanting to do something like this. To where you imitate both movements, right and left hand doing the same thing. But see if you can do this. Where only the right hand is moving and the left hand it's just holding a really long note. And there we go, that concludes your very first piano lesson. Let me know which parts of this video you want more clarification or more in-depth videos for. Happy practicing and I'll catch you in the next one.